is episode 26 and we realized while we were preparing that 26 is halfway to a full year of shift cast how exciting is that Jens? that's right we've been doing this for half a year we've not missed a week as far as i can remember and uh yeah 26 it's almost 100 I mean, 26 been... is almost 100. <laughs> <laughs> so, some some people will know what that's a reference to, but it's okay. a it's a niche reference to a YouTuber who was more relevant five years ago than he is today, but he still appeared in the Mr. Beast video. So hey, there you go. Right. Um. Anyway, it, yeah. I mean, it's it's just the two of us now. It is. We have been abandoned, deserted by a certain Canadian. Yeah, Michael bounced on us. He's out. Now he's got some. Uh, he's got some other obligations today. He'll be back next week. Uh, he was. He was sad to miss out today, but um, like we said, he'll be back next week. But today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, obviously what happened last week in uh, Shift Summer League. We'll catch everybody up on that. We'll take a look at some of the the standout next up um, candidates, and then we'll take a look forward at next week, and of course update you on what's going on around the off season, as well as our favorite speed taking. I, I, that is my favorite. It's is always it? fun to see the takes and it's always funny. It, it is, to hear the, fun, uh, yeah. you know, the way that we respond to them. Yeah, we are halfway through shift summer league. We are two thirds through the league's uh, play stage, but we still have the playoffs week after that. So we're halfway through the playing days. How's it been for you? Hoodie, because you have been watch partying Oxygen. Oh, yeah. As well as hosting That's right. the American part of the Shift Summer League. How's it been? Must have been exhausting. Double trouble. Yeah. Tuesday, well, the first half of the week is is kind of double trouble because obviously Mondays I typically stream. I didn't today because mm. I was coming back from a trip. But we do stream and then Shift Cast. And then Tuesdays is, you know, Shift Summer League, both EU and NA editions. Um, it has been busy, but it's been really fun. It's very. Uh, you know, I, I feel very grateful to be uniquely integrated like that, you know, being able to be signed to a team that's participating and cheer them on. And of course, they've done so well, you know, yeah, congratulations to those guys. So that's right. It's fun to watch when they win. Uh, but then, mm -hmm. you know, an opportunity like uh, like the NA side hosting and working with Aurelian Spaceman, even Jorby for a little bit there as well. It's been really fun. We've uh, we've got a good team. You guys put together a really good, you know, a really good project, a really good uh, like extended event. Um, it's been fun to work. The people behind the scenes are are legends, and I just hope that everybody is enjoying it. I know I certainly am, both from from like a you know a participant uh, as talent or or a streamer or whatever, and and but also as a fan. I think it's very fun to just stay. You know, it doesn't need to be premier RLCS. It doesn't need to be the high stakes, you know, hundred thousand dollar tournament. It doesn't need to be that. But just keeping tabs on like where oh, yeah. players levels are, where teams levels are. We're seeing some tryouts. We're seeing some new talent, like Talk kind of making a name for himself. One yeah. might surging again. And, and you know, there's different levels to it. We've got that premier S plus tier, you know, your Zen, Alpha, whatever, right? But then you've got, there's other tiers at the professional level. And it's so interesting to see because these offseason tournaments, a lot of times will provide mobility for players. A player like, look, I mean, you guys have probably seen it. Talk is now signed up to the EWC Community Cup for NA this upcoming weekend. With Mist and AJ, yeah, and I, I feel as though his last month and a half, two months of performance, whether it's that that Canada event that he played with Jane Apps, or you know some of these hot performances in the, the SSL, has probably been you know very critical for him getting a chance like that. So I think it's so fun to see all levels of play throughout the off season as well, because yeah. I, I know they're still grinding. They're doing the scrims, right? They're doing the six mans and everything. We don't always get to see that. So having this organized event to to keep tabs on things has been it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, because even outside of RLCS, the level of Rocket League at a pro level keeps getting mm -hmm. higher. We've That's seen right. that in the past as well, when with COVID and everything, there was a break in RLCS events, and still, you know, you, you saw everyone getting better at mm -hmm. every level. And you see some players right now who haven't had that chance really grow. And Talk is a perfect example of that. Props, honestly, to Miss and AJ for taking a chance on him, on him even if it's for just a community tournament. Uh, and yeah, it's not as serious as RLCS, but it, it gives other people more of a spotlight. So that's yeah. that's great to see Adam Baguette in the Twitch chat on our live him. stream. 
who is uh, on the roster, actually. It's AJ Coasting. Co- yeah. Did you see that? I did. Adam Bagot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going <laughs> to elevate talk to next uh, next level. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been great to be part of it as well. Behind the scenes, I mean, it's night shift for me until like 3, yeah. 4 a.m. But uh, it's lovely to see everyone's responses as well. If you mm-hmm. can... And, get engaged with Twitch chat or even the YouTube comments on the VODs we upload, I get them as notifications on my phone. So if you leave a message, it, it will get to me. <laughs> last one last one I got from half an hour ago is uh, someone who says, I'm just here for the unhinged commentary. So there you go. Nice. <laughs> Everyone has a different reason nice. for watching and following the shift summer league. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's been a blast and, and, and you know, we'll... Uh... We'll reflect a little bit more once everything is all concluded and, and we're, you know, behind us, but man, you guys have done an awesome job with it. Um, you know, from, from me personally, but also from the community, thank you to, to all the people involved uh, on the shift side and, and, you know, all other parties that help bring this thing together. It's been, it's been super fun. Well, let's get into our first segment, Jens. We've got it. shift cast summer school. Last week we had kind of a, speaking of unhinged, we had kind of an unhinged grading scale, all of us all over the place today. We're going to standardize things. That way you all know where we're at with one another. And our first team that we're going to be looking at and giving a grade is RMC. Reddles, Magic, and Cheese, who have definitely um, definitely had a great performance. I mean, currently oh, yeah. at the top of the NA League. And a shout out to Cheese for getting the MVP of Week 2, as well as being on top of the standing for, I yeah. think, Clutch Playmaker, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong there. It, it could be could be Savior or he's got a nomination. I, I think influence. it was I think it was the clutch playmaker, but yeah, maybe someone can correct me on that one. Um, but uh, I mean, he's just been an outstanding player for this team. Mm-hmm. But it's it's been a team effort as well. Yeah, right. It, it is everyone coming together, and it's a team that I think at the start of this tournament, everyone saw as as having a good chance. Yeah, in this in this league, but. They've really, really impressed. Um, for me, that comes down to out of 10, because that's how we're doing it now, yep. 9 out of 10. Because mm. it's not perfect what they did, but True. it's almost close to it. It's yeah. it's really good what, what they have shown. Um, did, who did they lose to? Because they didn't go perfect. Um. They had a loss. I think they've lost to Gen G, G2, and Space Station as their yeah. three losses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can already see where, where exactly. that's going, right? Yep. It's Gen G, G2, and Play, uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. PlayStation Gaming. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's been a team that has been winning against all the teams they should be winning against. That's right. You can't say that from everyone. That's right. The, the the common thread that we keep um, like coming back to with the RMC team on the broadcast, you know, Spaceman and, and Corelli and I, it's consistency, and that's what you just talked about. Like they G two has a loss to fun. Yeah, that, um, that RMC was what I was that. referring been, to. They like you said, they they've taken care of what they need to take care of, and I think you nailed it as well. Like Reddles Magic Cheese is not a team that we are expecting to miss the playoff bracket, right? Like it's not something that we think. Oh, they're not going to be in. Uh, but I also yeah. think community sentiment is probably not that they're going to be on top of the leaderboard when you have teams like Gen G, G2, Space Station, Rebellion, right, Big, exactly. OG. And so the fact that they have been consistent, they've only dropped three games. This last week, they went five and one. Um, I think their only loss was Space Station. And I think, let me glance real quick, I think it was a game five. Uh, to who did you say? Space Station. To Space Station. Yeah, RMC. Yes. Showering. Or no, they lost in game four. They lost in game four. They beat them in game five on day three and then lost to them in mm-hmm. game four on, uh, on on day four. So, um, you know, pretty level there with G, uh, with Space Station Gaming. Their only other two losses are, of course, throughout week one uh, to the top dogs in NA. So, yeah, my, my score is, is a nine as well. I mean, it's not perfect, right? A perfect would be 6-0. Uh, but I think it's incredible what RMC has done, a, a, an incredible level of consistency, which others have, have unfortunately not been able to, uh, you know, have not been able right. to replicate. But, um, you know, top of the standings, moving into the final week, I think that's a place that they're probably excited to be. That's worthy of a 9 out of 10. 
And we're skipping over to Europe. Yeah. For fake German amigos. Okay. A different story there. That's right. You want me to lead off with this one or you want to? Go, go for it. Okay, yeah. Fake German amigos. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about with RMC, we talked about kind of community sentiment. I think it's harder to peg the EU side, right? Like, you would expect Oxygen, you would expect Luna Galaxy to be at least towards the top. Um, if not, you know, you're one and two. But from there, it really does just kind of feel wide open. Um, I think there are plenty of good yeah. shouts uh, throughout the league. You know, obviously, Jobless should be towards the top. I think a lot of people will recognize the endpoint name, but there's plenty of talent with Resolve and, and Sadat and um, Aspartico and Fake GA and, and 100%, who has really, really been impressive. But Fake German Amigos, you know, we expect them to be in that mix. We expect, yep. uh, you know, we expect some level of consistency, but I think it's it's been a bit underwhelming, especially this most recent week. Um, I think they were three and three or maybe two and four. It was not a very good showing for Fake German Amigos. I also think, if I'm not mistaken, they provided JJ Rocks with their first win in league play. Um, so for me, I have to rate Fake German Amigos pretty low. I'm going to give them a two uh, for their week two performance. Yeah, that uh, makes complete sense. They were shared third in Europe uh, right. after day two, after week one. And I, uh, I want to say this too before you go. They took yeah. the auction to game five. Like they played them well at, for the first match of, of yeah. week two. So it looked, it looked good. Yeah, that's why I had them a little bit higher rated than you did at a three out of 10, but it's still nothing to write mm -hmm. home about because right. they played Oxygen close twice, right? Yep. yep. So that's pretty good, but still couldn't close out a win against Oxygen. That's not a shame, but against other teams, you know, you just have to get more wins out of that, especially when after day one, you are in that shared third position in the league standings. And then you drop all the way back down to seven. Is that not right? not seven? where you want to be. Yeah, it's seven. In fact, fake German Amigos lost to JJ Rocks twice, which is uh, now, JJ Rocks. Not all is not all hope is lost because not all hope is lost. Even though their game differential is a little bit worse than the fifth and sixth position, yeah. they are one of four teams that are currently mm. five wins right. and seven losses into mm -hmm. this league standing so there is plenty of chances for them to get back into the top five mm -hmm. quite easily even oh, yeah. um but they need to th th turn things around because this week two performance was not it for them right well let's jump back over to na we've got g2 stride and that is again another story all these are unique because the the, the team's um like preconceived notions or expectations moving into the event is yeah. so is so vastly different and g2 i think we all know it I mean, we had discussion on the on the broadcast day one. Would Space Station, or excuse me, would G two drop a series? Right <laughs> here they are, sure. you know, and fighting for top three. Um, you know, they're tied at eight and four with Genji, Space Station, and Rebellion in that two through five spot. Um, and and as incredible as G two has been this season, consistency wise, even obviously high high peaks with you know two grand finals appearance, one win at the majors, but they have never never finished below second place they've been in the grand finals of every single event and so that consistency i think is the part that surprised me you're gonna have some tough series obviously that you like throughout throughout g2's run this uh this season they've had some tough series throughout yeah. carmine corp's run when they had the three regional wins they had some tough series it's not always going to be cakewalk you know just because you're the better team doesn't guarantee you're gonna 3-0 sweep but that consistency with making sure you got the series win is what is missing in this shift summer league for, for G2. I mean, um, you know, four losses, that is nearly <laughs> nearly their like ROCS loss count, you know. I mean, they're they're yeah. Um they're, they're not they're not as high of a level as I expected, at least consistency wise. So for me, I got I gotta throw them a six. Uh I mean, this week they they lost to fun as well. Fun is, is yeah, down at the bottom one. of the leaderboard and, and that's no shade to fun. Uh, you know, that's but it's a, big a tough win. loss for G2 for sure. Loss. And, and exactly obviously, right. this is not RLCS. Sure. Teams are going to be playing a little bit differently, treating the games a little bit differently. Uh, and one of their losses was an overtime Game 5 loss to Gen G, mm -hmm. which that happens to the best. Well, clearly, it does. It happens to the major, re the reigning major champions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that loss against Fun, I mean, that is a little bit unforgivable. Um, I have him at a 6.5. 
out of 10 that, that half is because they did get the revenge against yeah. Fun and they sw swept them. So, uh, you know, there's that. But ugh, it's just a pass mark. Mm. Well, they did, then, close, they did close the week out strong, beating yeah. Rebellion 3-0. And, and I think, you know, the reason that the, this is a, a, you know, a fairly mid rating is because they're, it's because of what they are, right? You know, they're, right. they're yeah. such a high Obviously, level team. You take so. into account what exactly. G2 represent, which is the top of North America. And if mm -hmm. they can't be at the top of North America, then we have to, yeah. you know. Be a little critical of it. Well, yeah, hey, I mean. tell me what you think about, we'll jump back over to Europe. Um, yeah. Spartaco, what are you thinking Espartaco. about their performance this past week? Yeah. I well, just looked it up. It just means Spartacus in Spanish. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that's a 7 out of 10 for me. Okay. Is that team... It's it's a, a team that is in the mix with so many other European teams, like you said yeah. before. There's just a little bit less parity in Europe when it comes to uh, the Shift Summer League, at least. Um, they are, just like fake German Amigos, they are one of those 5 and 7 teams but they're looking a little bit better doing it. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's basically my take away from Espartaco. It, it's a team that uh, can sweep jobless, I believe, isn't it? What they did? Um, three and one. Um, which those are the kind of wins that you need to get yeah. Yeah. because jobless have not been looking that great uh, this uh, this event. Even though they are both them in the standings right now, that they're, they're just not. They're getting the wins, but they don't look good doing them, doing it. And uh, Espartaco, they've, they've been closing out some series against competition like Lunar Galaxy, ending off 3-1 on the second day of week two. That's solid. That's very solid. Um, but then also game five loss against Endpoint. It's a little bit of a mixed bag, you know? So for me, that's a, that's a seven out of ten. That's a, that's a decent... Decent grade. Absolutely. I, and I hate to totally copy, but I feel the exact same. I think they had a, it's just an up and down week. Like they've got a 3 1 win over Luna Galaxy Complexity. They've got that uh, 3 1 win over Jobless. But then at the same time, um, you know, they, they, they drop a series to Endpoint in game five um, and they drop a series to Resolve. So, and those are, those are not terrible losses by any means. But, um, you know, if you want to get a little bit higher rating and you see a little bit better performance from you. So, Spartaco, Right there in that, uh, you know, pretty good range. I think yeah. seven is is is. Uh, hey, it's a passing grade, right? <laughs> that's that's right. That's right. And they actually they lost th what three and one to yeah. resolve on day one, on day three actually, and then on day four uh, they got revenge three and one again. So they're just even they teams, I guess. Yeah, yeah. They did the same with Not endpoint. I think standings. they switched it where endpoint beat them the first time and. Or, or vice versa, right. but yeah. yeah, they traded. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of Rock League. I'm not sure if we'll do it the exact same way if we get to run the tournament like this again. Yeah, uh, but it is pretty cool that you can see teams take yeah. revenge like this. Absolutely. Let's jump back to NA before we close things out uh, with our final team. So we have Shopify Rebellion, um, which I think is an exciting team because obviously week one they had to play with memory. Uh, two piece was gone. As he joins back for week number two. Um, they take a huge, I mean, just a huge surge forward. Week one, they went three and three, and we talked about how that's actually, that's pretty dang good when you're using the yeah, sub. It is, absolutely. So um, week number two, they go five and one. Their last loss, uh, or excuse me, their only loss was their last game against G2, and G2 did sweep them, uh, but they were, it was a one-goal game in game one, it was a one-goal game in game two, a game two overtime, and G2 took, uh, took off with it in, in game three. But Rebellion looked really Really solid in week two. Um, I was excited to see that team bring like bring the same level once two piece got in, right? You you just don't always know. And obviously the Justin and Parth were playing well alongside memory in week one to to get those results that they got. And so I was hoping that they could bring that same level of performance in week two when they got back uh their their kind of their key piece there with, with two piece. And they did exactly that. I, I got to give them an eight. I was really, really impressed with Rebellion this week. I, I would go even further. I would have mm -hmm. given them a 10 out of 10 if they would have beaten G2 there. Yeah. But they didn't. They got swept. So it's a nine for me. Uh, 
they went up two places in the standings from seventh till uh, to fifth uh, in week two, and yeah, they just look good doing it. Yeah. Uh, that that's all, all you need to know about Shopify Rebellion. Uh, they are now eight and four in the tournament together with Space Station, G2, and Gen G, who are all above them. They're, that's the fourth, third, and second team in the league. Yeah. So that just means that a couple more wins here and right. there, and they are right at the top with Rattles Magic G. So it's it's a close race uh, in, in that upper segment of the leaderboard, and yeah. Shopify Rebellion are right back into it after week two. They absolutely are. Well, our final team is not close in a race. We're going to be raiding Oxygen Esports, who is currently 11-1 and one in league play. They have actually already clinched a they playoff have. spot. They cannot fall lower than sixth. Um, of course, they should go ahead and try to win out, um, You know, secure the best possible place that they can in that playoff bracket. Uh, but currently, they are the best performing team in, in either region, and they have a, a decent lead here in second place is 100% with a nine and three record. So um, yeah, Oxygen for me, I'm gonna give them a 10 out of 10 this week. Yeah. Uh, they they definitely, here. I mean, I'll just speak candidly. I think in week one, they were having a lot of fun being silly. Um, they ended up dropping a game to Endpoint. And I think- That is silly business. I think that like, I think that they underestimated the impact it would have. I think it kind of bothered them a little bit. They didn't wanna lose. <laughs> I don't think they like losing. They like to have fun. And I, you know, I don't blame them. They like to have fun, but I think they do want to win. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that a lot of times. Like they'll, the series might get, you know, the opponents might get one or two games, and then in game fives they kind of lock the, lock in and, and take care of business there. And so in week two, that's exactly what they did. They bounce back. They go six and zero, oh, no losses in series. I got to give them a ten there. They just didn't mess up. So, yeah, that's right. And oxygen represents definitely the the silly business, the unseriousness that oh, yeah. a league like this can bring, especially to a team that, let's be realistic, sometimes it's just better than, than the, the opponent, right. even before the series starts, it's pretty clear what's going to happen. Uh, so it becomes a little bit whimsical and sure. they start going for shots that they would not <laughs> maybe right. regularly go for all the time in RLCS matches. Uh, but hey, they still managed to to win a lot, and, and maybe you're right, maybe it's just because they hate losing so much. That That's honestly the, the trend that I've been hearing about from uh, professional esports players yeah. or athletes in general over the oh, last yeah. couple of years, that they very often hate losing more than Way that more. they like winning. Yeah. So their motivation is how much, they know how much they hate the feeling of losing, mm -hmm. and they don't want that to happen again. Yeah. It, it, so it sounds I get it. it sounds a little crazy, but also like right. when you kind of when, when you put yourself in that perspective, like winning is the expectation, right? That's why you're playing. Yeah, I I, I want to win. Yeah. I expect to win, right? For and and, and so that mindset to me, I, I mean, I've always been that that way with the sports and stuff that I've played. So that mindset to me, it makes sense. But it does sound crazy. Like, yeah, why, don't you, sound why don't you enjoy your win? Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, is that not your drive trying to yeah. get that trophy? No, you just hate losing. So much. Okay, well. <laughs> Um, uh, I was going to give them a nine and a half because they're maybe not perfect, but I, sure. I, I maybe, maybe I'll, I'll take it up to a 10 because they clinched the playoffs after sure. the second right, week. Right, they're right. the only team in the entire league, in the entire shift summer league, both NA and EU to do so after just four days out of six. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, uh, that's worthy of a perfect score, nice. I guess. That's pretty nice. Well, listen, that is our ShiftCast Summer School grading for week number two. Um, you know, we ran through a few of these teams. We're not going to have time for every single team every single week, but we will be um, dropping some grades next week as well, I assume, as we get our final week uh, under our belt. Let's jump to our next segment, which is Next Up Summer Standout Leaderboard. We've got our uh, Next Up Candidates our next up participants here, and we'll let Jens take over. Uh, these are the next up players that are in Shift Summer League. So he's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, those players and their performances. That's right. Well, we discussed the next up participants in Shift Summer League last week. So you can go back to that if you want to hear about 
who made it in. Uh, there's only four. And last week, those were in order in how they performed. Tekos, Matzer, Mitzer, Mitzer, right? You no, know, I've, I've actually heard a little bit keep about messing this. It up. Some, uh, someone in Twitch chat said the French casters say Matzer. Matzer, okay. Matzer. Well, I was right the first time then. Yeah. Talk and Briss Fox. Who I think lots of people just call Fox just to avoid having to pronounce <laughs> the first okay. part of the name. I think it's Riz Fox because it's a. Uh, Riz it's, Fox? Ri well, ri more of an E. Riz Fox. Riz Fox? R maybe it is Riz Fox. Maybe he's got that Ohio Riz, you know? <laughs> Skibbity. Skibbity. Okay. Got so it. skibbity. Let's go to next. I'm too old um, for this. How about the Sigma? Uh, right. <laughs> we have <laughs> actually Matzer. Coming into the first place with an incredible 1.114 rating. I mean, that's that nice. is high. Yeah, that's that nice. That is proper high rating, especially for such a young, talented player. Can you know? I ask yeah. for clarification here? Is this for this week specifically or the full league? Ooh, Michael put this in. I, I think it's for the full league, but I can quickly fact check that. We're going to find out. We're going to see, because I'm just curious if this is like a, you know, a week segment at a time where we're seeing these players or because it, I mean, frankly, if it's the full league play, obviously Mets are at a 1.14 yeah, is, huh? is very, very impressive um, throughout it the multiple is the days. Full, it is wow. four okay. days. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. That was a quick fact check. Um, nice. Well, very yeah, we, ha we have, uh, which makes him the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh player in the in terms of rating, of of yeah. course, that doesn't say everything. It hardly says anything, but hey, it's nice to look at. It's nice to see how much you're participating, how much right. you're contributing to your team, in this case, Sodad. Um, and yeah, he's just, he's been great. Uh, mm -hmm. The team has been, you know, on and off, Yeah, uh, yeah. I would say. Uh, but as, as a player, he has contributed a lot to that. Um, and then his teammate, um, Riz Fox, has still done pretty well, but he is the only next up candidate in Shift Summer League with under uh, a 1.0 rating in fourth place with a 0 0.952, which, you know, it's so still, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's still up there, right? Yeah. Uh, but let's not forget about Tackles, who was first last week after just the first two days with an insane rating, if I remember correctly, uh, but is only 0 0.002 in rating behind Matzer. So close at the top. Yeah. It's insane. Uh, which makes him the ninth player because there's actually Toxic, the MVP of week one, with a 1.113. So we have... Oh, wow. 112, <laughs> They're all so close. 13, 114. It's the only players that have ratings this close. Mm -hmm. And they're all three just stacked there together uh, from 7th to 9th. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the next up, because we're trying to follow, of course, the, the younger talent, which has a little bit more space in the, in the spotlight here. He has been the second best in terms of the rating with Talk coming in third with a respectable 1.063. But, you know, talk is a whole different story just from how much he has impressed the entire region yeah. to the point where he now gets teammates like Mist and AJ. I mean, uh, AJ might have, you know, been a little bit of a, a downtrend lately, but Mist, you know, is so well-respected sure. uh, in, every, in every turn of his career that to be able to team up with these two names, I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's a blessing for, for mm. such an early career move um, for talk. But we'll see, obviously, it's for the community uh, tournament, so we'll see what comes of it. Big, yeah, big chance for one of the next up uh, participants, talk. And, and like I said at the top, I really do think that this SSL opportunity has... has you know, it's given him the stage to perform, and, and he has uh, taken advantage of that. So he had Mitzer, uh, excuse me, Matzer, 1.114 in first place. Tekaz, 1.112, very close behind so close. in second. Talk, 
with a 1.063 in third, and Riz Fox with a 0.952 rating as well in fourth. Um, there's our next up participants in the Shift Summer League. Well, let's look forward at week three. Now, listen, folks, this is the final week of matches. All right. We got two more days Tuesday, Wednesday, this coming it's tomorrow, and the next day. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, this week. And then we go to playoffs next week. So you're, we're going to have some teams eliminated this week. You know, we're going to have some teams clinching the playoff berth this week. It's going to be an exciting one. The stakes have raised. You know, the intensity has raised. It's just going to be it's going to be a, an exciting week all across the board. You're not going to want to miss this. So let's do some marquee matchups. Uh, let's talk about some of the ones that are exciting us. And, and let's do it this way because there's just two of us here. Yeah. Select which one you like from the NA side and, and, and get after it. Oh, okay, okay. We're just taking one of the... Whichever one you want. We okay. don't have, I say we don't even have to From order. From NA? Hmm. Um, which one? There is... Well, let's, let's have a look. I actually have some leaks right here. Whoa! For wh which teams will be on the featured main leaks? broadcast. Whoa! Uh, is one of those on there? Um, actually, I don't think so, which is even more exciting because the three matches we uh, picked out aren't even the ones with the highest implications that we want to show oh, wow. on the, okay. on the nice. featured, featured stream. Um, so we have, wait, let, me, let me pull up the leaderboard for this one because that's going to matter. Uh, there we go. Click, click, click. I think you can hear that. Discord noise yeah. suppression takes that out. Okay, but uh, yeah. That's a clicky gamer mouse right here. One of those lightweight ones with all the holes in it. Um, we have Shopify Rebellion versus Gen G Mobile One Racing. Because that is the top... Eight and four team with a 28 game wins and 17 game losses as we go into the third week against the bottom of the eight and four teams with a 27 and 23. So that's only a plus four instead of a plus 11 game differential. If they end up, you know, in the same spot in terms of series wins, then that's going to matter. But obviously, we're going to have teams playing against each other from those um, from those rankings. So it's going to be, I think, very hard to have that many uh, teams get the same placement at the very end. It, it can happen, but the chances are pretty low, I'd say. Yeah. But right now we have top two against top five. And this is going to decide a lot for the lower bracket of the playoffs, right? Yep. Because uh, we have the top four going into the uh, upper semifinals, and then the lower quarterfinals is where the fifth and sixth team at the end of this week end up, which just means that you have uh, one fewer opportunity because you can't afford a loss at that point mm -hmm. to get to the top in the, in the playoff brackets. Uh, so right now, that would be Shopify, Rebellion, and Dignitas. But everything can change after another six rounds. And this matchup can decide a lot of that because those are teams that really are in that same race. Yeah, They're not trying to get the wins to get ahead of other people. No, they're trying to get this win to get ahead of the other team. Yep. Well, these these three NA matches that we're going to highlight here as marquee matchups are actually all occurring on Tuesday, the final day of league play. And so this Rebellion and Gen.G racing, uh, Mobile One racing match, it, it's it's going to be Tuesday? extremely influential as far as their season Wednesday and where the they land. Huh? It, it's on Tuesday, right? No, these, are, these, these matches are Wednesday. Wednesday, you said Tuesday. Wednesday, sorry. The 31st, um, the second day. So, so yeah, um, it'll be the final day of league play. And, and my right. point with that is they're going to be, uh, you know, at, at that, that point, point it's, it's all of nothing. It's Yeah, exactly. It's very influential. 
yeah. with where they land in their seating. The second match yeah. that we're highlighting here for NA is G2 Stride versus RMC. And those are two of your top three teams right now, RMC at the top. Um, again, they will have matches tomorrow uh, for, for day one of week three before this specific matchup. But this Rebellion versus Gen G and then G2 versus RMC, these matches are, are almost certainly going to be, uh, you know, just very important, you know, determining where these teams land one through six or, you know, if something crazy happens and, and one of these teams ends up being booted outside of the top six even. So, um, yeah, like I said before we jumped into this, this week three is going to be so, it's just, it's so intense. You know, I think league play, one thing that is different about that from current RLCS format is every single Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every single match feels incredibly intense because you're always facing elimination. In league play, that first week, you might feel kind of relaxed. Week two, maybe you start to, you know, lock in. And, you can and get afford focused. a loss or two. Yeah. That's right. You, you, it doesn't feel so extreme and severe from a player perspective um, and also from a viewer perspective. But now as we get to the final, you know, the final week of, of league play, we get to the final few matches. Now things become intense. We can see where teams are going to land and, and what the potential um, outcome is for them for league play. So exciting stuff. Rebellion versus Gen G. And that is at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the 31st. Um, G2 versus That's RMC the will round. be the, the, the second match there, um, second round of matches, 7.50, 8 o'clock, July 31st, sometime around there. And then our final match we want to talk about for NA, and this is another important one, OG versus Fun. If OG can continue their momentum from last week's day two, they might be in a race for one of those playoff spots. Yeah, it's fun is it's looking rough, right? Oh yeah. You're two two and ten. At that point, you're basically trying to play spoiler for other teams. And mm -hmm. OG is the perfect team to play spoiler for and, and because they are right now just outside of that top six that they need to get to get into week four, into the playoffs. And a loss to fun would be devastating. It would absolutely be devastating. I mean, it yeah. happens to the best. I mean it happens to Japan, to, to G2, <laughs> to literally the best, but you know, uh, so maybe they're not the best actually, uh, with that loss to fun, but oh gee, they, they really can't afford it. Yeah. Yeah. They can't, they dug a big hole in the first half and, and now they're stuck digging their way out, um, in the second half of league play and they've done well. I mean, they're, they're at five and seven in series dig is in is so they're in the seven spot, which right now is not playoffs. But Dignitas is one match ahead of them. Dignitas is six and six. And so in, in the very first round of matches, if OG can beat Rebellion and Space Station beat Dignitas, they'll be tied for sixth. So OG is right there. They're on the cusp. Um, they are going to need to play well to, to make it in there, but um, it's certainly doable. Right. Let's talk about Europe, shall we? Mm, okay. Because there is something else on the cards. Yeah. In the first round on Tuesday. No. On Tuesday? Yes. On Tuesday. There, there you go. It is Endpoint versus uh, Endpoint CX versus Grid, Sor Grid Serve Resolve. It is the British Derby. <laughs> they have played against each other before, and I believe um, Resolve got that win, didn't they? Yeah, I am not sure. Resolve end point, end point, end point. Yeah, Take that was a three and one for reserve. For reserve, reserve. <laughs> all their reserve. all their names are fusing. <laughs> uh, great serve, resolve. <laughs> there you go. Previously, Williams resolve now mm. great serve. Um, they got that uh, battery pack loaded up because they took that win three and one in the first week, if I remember correctly. Uh, was it not? I am so bad at trying to find these matchups because there's uh, yes. so Resolve many Resolve beat them in, actually it was the second week. Resolve beat them was it? in round eight. They beat them three, one. There you go. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the standings, you see that Endpoint has been doing much better. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's only two uh, wins or a, a loss and a win here and there sure. difference. 
Um, but it really matters that endpoint get that other get that next win to get into the upper yeah. uh, semifinals. Whereas Grid Serve Resolve currently in ninth uh, with a four and eight record are really fighting for survival. Uh, it's not impossible because there are four teams with a five and seven record, which you know uh, a loss from them and a win from Resolve can easily get them back into that mix. Uh, but they are fighting for survival. It's it's going to be a tough fight because yeah, they have shown that they are not best team in this league, and now they're going to have to match up against uh, some other pretty tough competition. Um, I mean, I think they can take a win off Jobless. Um, they certainly can take a win off of uh, JJ Rocks, which they're also facing. Uh, they're facing Endpoint in the first round, though. So that's where they need to get that confidence. They need to repeat their three and one or something mm -hmm. from that second week to get into the swing of things because they are going to need it. Resolve is definitely a team uh, with the ability to surge in week three like they they certainly could go five and one maybe six and oh or four and two and, and improve their standings enough um and like you said they're they're just on the outside of it but they start with endpoint and they've got to get uh, off to a right uh, off to the good off to a good start on the right foot let me get my phrases right uh well look match number two um is espartaco versus fake german amigos and those are two teams that we rated and it felt you know, Espartaco on the better side, fake German Eagles on the lower side. But, it, you know, if we look back, I think you could probably swap them for week one. So, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a tale of, of two similar stories of inconsistency. And so these teams both have very high highs, but unfortunately have had low lows as well. And so this, you know, as far as predicting, I have no clue where to predict. Yeah. But both of these teams are right there in the running. Um, you know, we just talked about how important it was for OG and and – you know, resolve trying to surge their way into it. Uh, but these two squads are are currently they're in the um or fake GA is is one out, but they're also tied at, at the five and seven. So they're all kind of tied for that fifth place spot. Espartaco, Luna Galaxy, fake German Amigos, and Sadad. So um, you know, just as we outlined for the, the teams that are outside of the top six, it's equally important for those teams that are right there on the cusp because they can very quickly and very easily fall out of the uh the top six playoff bracket. And you know the season we're 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 at the end, right? They've got these final two days, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and so um, every single series counts, every single game counts. You know you want to get you want to be getting these three zero sweeps to try to give yourself a better seating, better game diff, all that, uh, all that jazz. So Spartaco versus Big German Amigos is going to be a fun one. Um, again, that's the round two matches tomorrow at uh, seven fifty CEST. Uh, we do have one final match, Jens, that we yeah. want to talk about from EU. That's oxygen versus hundred percent. Mm. Honestly, I don't think it's going to change the standings right. too much because yeah. oxygen are eleven and one. They are already clinched in the playoffs, but obviously another team could take that top spot. I don't see it happening personally. Uh, hundred percent though, second with nine and three, have some competition on their heels. They have jobless eight and four. And then they're six and six for endpoints, et cetera. Uh, so they're in a very good position to hold that second sp uh, spot and go into the playoffs with the best seeding yeah. to meet Oxygen in the finals, I can imagine. Um, so they're looking like the best, the second best team yeah. in Europe right now. So if they can keep that up, uh, you know, an upset win against Oxygen Esports would really help them cement that. Um, and it would show the world and especially Oxygen themselves that they can be beaten. Uh, but it, it, it would be big for 100% confidence, obviously, but I don't think that even if this upset win goes to 100%, it would really change much sure, sure. for the league play stage, but for the playoffs, it could, could have mm -hmm. some... Some, well, uh, yes. Well, it may not shift the standings much, but I think you you pointed out what's most important is just to build some confidence as you move yeah, into yeah, the playoffs, yeah. right? Luis P, Crispy, and Acro, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, that is your roster for 100%. They have been very impressive throughout league play. Um, 
I think everybody, especially the players, because they they you know they play against them, they all know that th those are talented individuals. Um, but I think they have certainly shown that they make a great team. There's a good team comp there, uh, which is a shame because Crispy's obviously going to be uh, jumping over the pond here for CRL here soon. But uh, for now, this 100% squad looks very good, and Oxygen better be on their A game if they uh, if they want that win there. There you go. And as okay. far as I know, yeah. and this is a leak. Oh, a leak. these are actually the features matches. Oh, there you go. So you might so see the endpoint resolve, Aspartico, Big Joe and Amigos, and Oxygen 100% matches. That's live right. One, on two, the, and three on the uh, Shift Arley Twitch channel. Make sure you're tapped in. All right, so there's some of our marquee matchups we want to cover for week three. Final week of league play. I cannot stress it enough. It is going to be exciting, intense. You do not want to miss it. We've got our off-season roundup. Let's keep you all up to date with what's going on around the Rocket League esports world. And the first, uh, the first thing here, I think caught a lot of people by surprise, but then with a little bit more clarification, uh, you know, everybody kind of settled down. So Joriez was announced by Chiefs Esports to be playing with them at the Esports World Cup. And that's it. Joris is not moving to OCE. He is not joining Chiefs for RLCS, but he is standing in for Finn, who is retiring. And so he will be competing alongside, uh, who is it, Hunter and... Sure. Uh, uh, banana Head? Is it not, no, not no, Chiefs. Wait. Um, no, no, you're right. It's stupid. Um, well, uh, well, we'll, we'll figure it out in a second. But he is, as I said, he's joining the uh, the Chiefs esports. It's only Kaka. There it Kaka. Is. Okay, so um, Joriez will be yeah. jumping in with those guys for esports World Cup. By the way, while we're talking about it, this esports World Cup, which is rebranded Gamers Eight, is not, to my disappointment, is not pre battle. It is only three v three. Yeah, yeah. Well, is, it's uh, it was well, obviously fine. Cool, they, I guess, they can make whatever format they formats. want. But yeah. I am I am sad because I really enjoyed Crew Battle. I can only imagine they changed it to try to gain a little bit more legitimacy. Um, sure, sure. Because in the end, that otherwise it would be classified as show matches. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't. Well, I will tell you. I did a crew battle show match this weekend. A little self plug. If y'all want to see some fun content like that, follow twitch.tv forward slash hootie who. Three O's, Whoa. by the way, at the end. Don't forget it. We did a crew battle between Denmark and France. We grabbed some players from those countries, let them duke it out. That was a lot of fun. I just love crew battle. I think it's super fun. It's interesting because it introduces something new where the players have some sort of choice. And I know it's not a ton of choice, but... Seeing them choose twos or ones or, you know, it goes back and forth and they decide what to what game mode to play next is always so interesting to me. So um, I thought it brought something fun and unique to Rocket League. And I hope to see um, at least some show matches and some smaller tournaments, maybe community organized stuff, because I thought yeah. I, I've always very much enjoyed crew battles. Yeah, well, whatever you do with it, I think the um what were they called during the world championship two years ago when they did the 1v1s in the middle of like nights what did, what did right. they call it was like east versus west 1v1s they they took some very good 1v1 matchups yep. uh from mostly players who had already been knocked out of the tournament uh, so they could just focus on that and they brought that in as a show match for the world championships and that was great i want to see that again uh, and I still want to see like retired players come back for a show match yeah. during uh, imagine, Championship Sunday. Imagine you could like bring back season six players and oh, just yeah. run, like have them run it back. Season six World Championship. That'd be. I so mean, there's fun. some coaches walking yeah, around at uh, the RLCS here. Worlds that you know you can just bring into to a match. I and mean, you, you saw with memory, some of them are the great some of players. them are still ballers, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh, that's funny. I mean, I can't imagine that. Violent Panda would drop a couple of stinkers. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, th th that would be really fun. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know what... L but you about Chiefs and mm -hmm. Joris Robben getting on an Oceanic team 
that was the biggest shock to yeah. everyone before yeah. everyone understood what the actual implications were, which is not that much. Uh, but that would have been that would have been a move, wouldn't it? That would have think... rocked, rocked Rocket League esports a little bit. Yeah, that that would have been insane because the first, actually, the first interregional move that we saw in Rocket League esports history was an Australian player. Drippe moving hey. to NA. Do you remember what the team was? Evil Geniuses. There you go. He played and with Classics and was it Gabe? Corrupt. Yeah, Corrupted G. Yeah. yeah, it was. And um, unfortunately, it went terribly. If you go to shiftarly.gg, there's a whole article about this <laughs> from like last week, two weeks ago, Yeah, which goes into the ramifications of it, the, the story at the time and everything that came afterwards, because it opened the door for, yeah, uh, for regional, like interregional moves. Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw obviously Turbo Pulsa from yeah. EU moving to NA and winning the championship for Garage E. So it, it all started from a move from OCE and now Having Jorius, I mean, not really, but imagine, imagine if Jorius moved to OC, that would change things up. But yeah. Absolutely would. Yeah. That's another that reason that I'm good. bummed because Jorius is moving over and it would have been fun to see him in crew battle format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would have been. Yeah, well, we, got a, we got some more stuff to uh, update you on. We got Unbroken and Davi. I'm probably mispronouncing both their names, but they leave... Gamer Legion, Alpi, and the coach Lit will stay on the roster. So it looks like one of the uh, one of the teams in Sam that was fairly competitive is already making some big moves, um, releasing or allowing two of them to leave, uh, retaining one piece in Alpi, and and they will uh, of course begin to rebuild for the next season. But we're already beginning to see the shuffle unfold. Of course, last week we talked about Nupo signing with um, with Twisted Minds. He'll be playing with them moving forward post worlds uh so the shuffle begins folks we've got a uh, an extended off season as well of course most of the shuffling will probably occur after worlds but um you know some of the squads are they're, they've already started so yeah uh, gamer legion was ninth in the south american rss season of 2024 so they're not a team at the very top or close to the top that is probably like you said going to wait sure. until world after worlds because then you have more room for roster changes right yeah, when yeah. you actually have players. top teams yep. that might want to make a change as well and uh, so then that's when it's actually all going to start going crazy with the the top teams but a team in ninth you know i i can see yep. that they've got a, a really extended off season now and uh, they're dropping two players with a graphic on Twitter that had too much AI uh, filters on top oh, of it. And I, I wasn't sure what's happening there, but I don't know. It doesn't look good to, to my eyes. That's funny. But you have in Europe, Sodad blowing up. Yeah. His Fox, Riz Fox, Riz as, Fox. He is, as he is known by now, <laughs> leaves Sodad. And Matzer and Sizen are looking for a new third. That's the situation right now. They are still going to be competing in the Shift Summer League, even though they've lost one of their players because they have added a sub, a substitute who they will be playing with. Mm -hmm. um, have they announced that already? Is that public? I don't know. Have I don't they not? Know. Well, then here's your leak. Whoa! More leaks! Eugene. Yuji will be playing with the Sodad. Did you hear me saying they're like really leaning into my hillbilly accent? <laughs> I was calling him Sawdad. 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 <laughs> Yuji is going to be joining Sawdad. Well, with... I don't know what you saw, Dad. <laughs> but uh, I saw a team that I don't think that's, that's a bad move for them. <laughs> Yuji, great player. Oh, yeah. Great next up talent, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be joining the ranks there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, that 
It is... That's a full French... Yeah, full French now. Yeah, that is a full French team, of, but with Riz Fox, I mean, basically French, he's, right? He was Belgian, right? Yeah, but French-speaking Belgian. Sure. So but now, now they've unlocked it's, the full it's like power. Hato. Yeah, now, okay, okay. They've unlocked the full power now. Yeah, but I would say the the French power also comes through in the francophone Belgians like Atto. It does, you're right, it does, absolutely. It um, seems like all you need to do is know the language. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what gets those people into that community. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. It's 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 really it's really not that far apart. Of course, there's they're bordering countries, Belgium mm -hmm. and France. But I I live in Belgium, but in the Dutch speaking part. But I kind of know how it goes in the French speaking part, where they just look at France as their big brother. Okay. Right? So yeah. even even with politics, even when at the very start of the uh, COVID epidemic. You saw that whenever France implemented new measures, the oh. French-speaking politicians in Belgium were immediately like, "Hey, shouldn't we do that too?" And the music, you know, every the culture of the French-speaking part of Belgium looks towards France so much because obviously it's a much big, bigger country. Um, of course, there's artists uh, from. Brussels, which is also mostly French speaking, like Somai, uh, who do really well in, in that area. So it can go the other way, but usually I'm going to a concert in uh, Ronquière, which is south of Brussels in the French speaking part, and like 90 or even 100%, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think 90% of the artists are, are French. Mm. So it, it kind of goes to show that if you live in that part of Belgium, you are basically French. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So it's the same for Riz folks. But now with Eugene, it's a full uh, French roster. And the, he's just their substitute for Shift Summer League, as far as I'm aware. I don't know if that will be like a tryout. I mean, it kind of is, obviously. Sure. sure. Automatically. But if that is a player who uh, Matsuri and Saison want to try out uh, in the offseason that they're basically playing in, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. I'm sure they are, are taking it a day at a time. I think a lot of these teams, especially the ones that were fighting in and out of main events, fighting in and out of regionals, you know, the, the way that um, the way that these off seasons work is like it trickles down, right? Your top teams make changes, and then those players become available and trickle a little further down and kick yep. out those players, and so on and so forth. Um, and so your players that are down here, you know, bumping into regionals, missing one, bumping in, they've got to wait for all this stuff to unfold. And then they can find out, maybe they can plug in, like talk, right? AJ no longer with M80, Mist no longer with NRG. Talk gets a chance at a pull-up. So, yeah. um, you know, a lot of these players like Eugen, Sizen, Matzer, Riz Fox, you know, all, all these different guys that have a, a huge upside, but maybe just haven't had a chance yet, or maybe had a chance. And, and you know, like Sizen, unfortunately, this the, the Messiah moved in and, and took his spot. So, um I think these these guys, of course, they're trying out. Of course, they're they're seeing what works, but they're also going to be playing a patient to see what unfolds this yeah. offseason. I mean, they have enough time. They got lots of time. Now, speaking of time, we are going to get to speed taking, which we never do quickly, but we always enjoy. This is our final segment for the show. All right, a little bit shorter. We don't have Michael, the yapper here today. Um, no interview as well. So we'll, we'll uh, but we we should be back on track next week. Uh, maybe we'll have a special guest after um, after week three uh, of Shift Summer League. Well, let's just go straight in order. This is our first take from OJ888. And yeah. we have to give this to you because I cannot answer this. Club football oh. is better than national football. I don't I, I don't watch football that much <laughs> either. So sorry, OJ. I, I, we talk a lot about sports in uh, Shift Discord, OJ and, and I. Um, he has very strong opinions on it. Yeah. Uh, for me, I watch more national teams mm -hmm. play football because then I feel like everyone is talking about it, right? Sure, it's this sure. event yeah, yeah. when there's yeah. a European championship or, or world championship. And then it becomes more interesting for me to follow along. Right. Uh, like it's, it's not so bad to watch, but I, I wouldn't really go out of my way to watch the Premier League or La Liga or whatever. So I'm not that interested in club football because I don't follow a club. I think sure. that's the main part. Everyone yeah. 
has a nationality. Everyone uh, is part of like a following of a national team. Even if I, if they don't watch a match, uh, they they hear the cars coming by, you know, dude, <laughs> dude through the yeah, streets, yeah. especially when Turkey wins, um, but also when the national team uh, right. is winning. So it's a different experience for me. But I can imagine that if you are actually a fan of a club, that changes everything. Yeah. Um, because then you you are experiencing football so differently. You're experiencing the competition completely differently. But in terms of just the... Um, I, I, I'm going to say, yes, club football is better than national football because of oh. course it is. Those players are always training with their team. They are bought for millions to play for that team yeah they are just called in to play for this national team for a couple matches and then they're back to their club so obviously they are way more accustomed to playing with their team and that is going to bring better football okay fair enough throw me uh throw me a one i will throw you a take from mythalian uh, whose okay. name i think is slightly misspelled right here um it is but that's uh, that's fine. He's used to it. Um, Mythalian says, Mark Bayet is the best player to have never made worlds. He was close. That sounds right. I mean, uh, there's an abundance of players that never made worlds. And I'm sure some of them are good, but Mark has definitely achieved a ton as an individual and, and as a part of BDS and, of course, was, you know, technically a part of the roster. Yeah, technically, but, but I not think, really. I think it's fair to say Mark is the best player to never make Worlds. I think that is fair to say. Um, I can't think of... I can't think of anyone that has achieved... I mean, he's a major winner. I can't think of anyone that has achieved that much that has unfortunately not been able to attend at least attend yeah worlds yeah yeah so i i mean i like that take i think that's uh i think that's probably accurate uh we got one here from fear not f-e-e-r not show match fear this is the german fear this is like regular fear like i'm scared (laughs) f-e-a-r and here's what they say yens is uh Uh, the perfect person to ask this question. Okay. <laughs> I am. It's true. Champion is the most frustrating rank in Rocket League. See, I don't agree. I don't really okay. encounter that much toxicity. Really? Yeah. I, I Maybe. I don't know. I, a, I don't know. Of course it happens, but. Sure, of course. I have a theory about ranked. Yeah. The threes are the worst. Oh, is Flat that three, it? Do I play too much three, twos? Champ three. And here's why. It's because you're on the cusp of achieving Oh, you mean the rank, right. and not three through three, but right. the three ranks. Okay. Diamond three, plat three, et cetera. Because yeah, you're on yeah, the cusp yeah. of achieving what you want. So right. you're, you know, you're, all, you're on edge. Or you just lost it, and you're on edge. That makes um, sense. And I think that, and this could just be hard cope, but I think that is also an area that is typically populated with like boosting and smurfing because you're so close to... Like a platinum one may not reach out for a booster, but a platinum three is like, oh, I might could get my friend to hop on yeah. and pop me up to the next. So I think the, that's my theory. Threes, platinum three, diamond three, champ three. I think that those are the worst. That does make a little sense. Yeah. The most sweaty I have played was in champion three. There it right is. Right now I'm, I'm champ two um, and have been for years. Uh, I peaked at grand champ, but didn't stay in for very long. Uh, <laughs> It really depends on what time of day as well. I big agree. Uh, I usually play pretty late at night, mm-hmm. which is really a mixed bag. Yeah. Sometimes people are just at the end of their wits and at the end of their day, <laughs> yeah. at the end of their wits as well. Seven hour uh, session. You know, the most wholesome games I have ever played in my life Morning. are not ranked, but unranked lobbies at 4 a.m. Oh, okay. That is Peak peak wholesomeness is nice. unranked at 4 a.m. Okay I'll, okay, I'll keep that because in mind. All the late nighters are already gone to bed because it's sure. too late for like staying up that late. Like yeah. you're playing 
either with people who are just working night shifts or who are just insomniacs or whatever, but they're just there to chill because it's unranked. Again, ranked does not work with this, but yeah. you just stick around in an unranked lobby and you play like five, six, seven games with these guys and they're your best friends for the evening. <laughs> That's You'll nice. never okay. see them again afterwards, but that's sure. peak wholesomeness is unranked in the middle of the night. Well, there but you go, I folks. Can see, I can see three people in the Twitch chat saying Diamond is the most toxic rank. I, which... I also think Diamond is a fair shout Yeah, because of where it lands player distribution-wise. Yes, I was about to bring that up. Yeah. Because it, yeah. it is this rank where you are better than average, that's but right. there's still a lot of people playing mm -hmm. in that rank. Like, you still have a huge player base in Diamond. Yep. So by just in terms of numbers, I think I've brought this up for toxic fan bases as well. Like the bigger the fan base, the higher the chance that some people right. are just going to be assholes. Mm -hmm. The same happens with Diamond. You still have this huge, you know, population playing in Diamond. Uh, and also, of course, there's more players in, in Gold and Plats. But, but they're maybe not you're invested as, too. Exactly. They're not try mm -hmm. as much as the diamonds. So yeah. I can totally see diamond being the most toxic. But I don't think champ is that bad. Yeah. I really don't. I think that's fair. All right. From Colt, who says, Utopia Coliseum is the worst standard map in the game. Okay. My answer is no. But I do have a question. So standard map just means like the regular shape. Or do they mean like your standard RLCS maps? Because I'm going to say this. Forbidden Temple, Fire, and Ice. Horrendous. It's the worst. Oh, it's yeah. It's the worst. It yeah, actually, yeah. when I look at my screen, my eyes sincerely hurt. It causes pain to my eyes. It is I mean, so the, the, horrendous. Neon Fields is absolutely worse than that, but it is, it is bottom tier for sure. Neon Fields is not worse. It is. Fire and ice is so, so bad. No. If you're looking at the blue side, you're okay. <laughs> if you're looking at the red side, you just you, you need sunglasses. It's the worst. I hate that field, but I don't know if those count. I don't know if those count. You know what I mean? I don't know if they're talking about like Beckwith, man, you know, man, I don't know if they mean like the most standard. Uh, but I'll say this. I mean, I think Utopia Coliseum is a great map. Yeah, I think I like it's a it. fun one. So I don't, I don't, I don't have any qualms. I don't see, I don't see the what what they have uh, against yeah, it but uh, i agree oh, i was playing in a league with friends um and we made it to the semi-finals okay. lost completely just completely fell apart in the semi-finals but we um we our games were streamed by just a friend of ours it, this is all just between friends so there's okay. not actually that much competition going on it's also like random made teams at the start of the league where you have one of the best uh, third, one of the middle third, and one of the lowest third, and I'm right. in the middle third. So everyone has a tier one player who is always going for cringe ad rebels. Uh, <laughs> but this game was streamed by someone who isn't very familiar with how we usually stream those games, and he picked that cursed field that you were talking about. Oh, no. He, and, and I mean, you can do that in the group stage. Okay, we, we, we love to troll. We love to just play for fun. But in the semifinals, come on. Come on. <laughs> that was not okay. Get this trash off my screen. Unbelievable. All right. All right throw, throw one at me. All right. Oh, no, that was mine. No, wasn't I, it? I just did. Yeah. Okay, you need one. All right, this is from Pyro. Uh, Rocket League needs to bring back Monster Cat songs. Uh, needs to bring Monster Cat songs back to the RLCS. Were you a fan mm. of the Monster Cat stuff? Some. Uh, it's not yeah. like the regular music I listen to, although I have gotten more into electronic adjacent genres like Indie Tronica, mm -hmm. which is like a mix of like classic indie pop music, indie rock, and electronic music. Yeah. Um, I listen to uh, Electro Swing. So that's kind of electronic music too. And, and that's kind of what Monster Cat is, right? But it's more like the drum and bass or not like drum and bass, but what do you call that? What's Monster Cat? What genre is that? Oh, I ha would have no clue. It's something electronic, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, there's some banger songs. Um, Electro Pop 
dubstep I yeah I, that's i would call everything dubstep or i would just say oh it's like skrillex right that's well, how yeah. ignorant i am but that mm, i don't think the monster cat songs are like that though i agree they're not <laughs> i just so, don't know how to describe it <laughs> yeah okay well I, I i didn't mind them i think it was a an addition that was loved by a lot of people i would even say most um so i think yes they do because it was just, I think, a very win-win partnership because you have the, the music in the game as well. I think that's m much more important than bringing it to RLCS. Uh, it's just like having that in the game, having those albums. I know two people who have bought the, uh, the vinyl for it. So oh, really? uh, obviously it, it works. I mean, the album cover is kind of kind of sick because it has like an octane boosting up into the skies and like these pastel colors. Or like not really pastel, but... It, it looks sick. So, yeah, I think they should bring that back. I have the music very low and have my main ga main game sound at like 15. Uh, yeah. so when I it's not PC, that I listen to it that much. But uh, When I moved to PC, I turned off all game, game music. All right. All right. I have one last one for you. Okay, let's hear it. From GC, who says the Cybertruck is the worst car to have ever been added to Rocket League. No. <gasps> no? No. I don't like it. It's Explain too long yourself. for the hitbox. I know there's other reasons that other people don't like it. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's a car that has had a, held a special place in my heart, uh, and it's been a hatred-filled place. <laughs> Whenever I was, uh, whenever I was newer to the game, I used to, and I'm, I'm at. This is embarrassing to mention, but I'm actually serious. I used to get tilted by seeing this car. Wow. I was much younger. Um, it just is. It's an ugly car. Much younger, twenty six. Um, well, I mean, I've been playing almost a decade, so. You know, when I, I picked joking. it up, I was like twenty three, twenty four. Um. So the the, the car is the X Devil. Oh, I freaking hate that car. It looks like a little like dung beetle or something. <laughs> it just looks ugly. It looks heavy. It's a stupid car. If you use it, I'm not your friend. I don't like it. X Devil by far the worst car in the game. I mean, the actual dung beetle is the Scarab. Yeah, Scarab's bad too, but it's got some. It's got some character. Like there, there's it does. some people. It's a bull. You know, some people like it. It's cute. Whatever. X Devil. No redeeming qualities. All bad. Mm. I hate it. I can it. see that. I can it's see It's actually, that. it's kind of got me pissed off right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry for bringing it up. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I just think the whole... What would be your worst? Story, I think it, it might be the Cybertruck. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Just, I definitely the, get it. I get the it. Whole, the whole car and, and everything it stands for. Sure. I think that, that comes into account as well. Sure. I just I I I'll, I'll say I definitely get all of that but this is the first time that I can remember in a long time where they have had some sort of collaboration and it's free. That is true. I mean That's crazy. I think I think I hope they had this internal meeting like how much can we ask for this car and there were so many developers <laughs> so against Nobody's buying it. <laughs> inviting. Yeah. That they are like, yeah, like we know people are gonna hate this if we're gonna charge money for it. Um, oh, that's actually funny. That could I, be true. I think that that's how it how it happens. How that could it, be why true. it's free. But also it would have a redeeming quality. If it was when it was announced, people were like, oh my god, it's such a square car. Mm -hmm. It need, it's gonna be the, a perfect hitbox fit hitbox fit. And it doesn't at it's all. Not, not even not close. Not even close. Not uh, even close. They're like I mean, a third of the car at the back. could have saved it. A third. If yeah. you, so you can go into the field and, and like you jump and then you like land on the back of the car or the nose of the car, right? If you do yeah. the back of the car, I'm not kidding. Like a third of the car just sinks into the ground. Oh, yeah. It does not match the hitbox at all. I mean, you can use a Bacchus Mod plugin as well to show where the yeah, actual actually. hitbox is. Or you could just look it up on Twitter or YouTube. And it's... It's a hybrid hitbox, so it, people it, already hate it. Yeah, but and it hangs out the front so and the back. Oh yeah, it, it compl it's just off. It's just yeah, not even like too long or too short or too wide. It's just off. It's just bad. So 
It's bad in game. Everything it stands for is awful. <laughs> yeah, no, I think this is, I mean, it's GC, so it's a kind of a, a foot farming take, but for once, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just, take. it has to, well, I'm has glad to be that said. I, I, I hope it was clipped, and I hope that I can push my X devil hate agenda. <laughs> That's what I hope. Yeah. Well, my take is the mind. cyber truck is, is fine. Um, X devil, not fine. I don't want to see it. But listen, folks, that is all of our topics and segments for today. Like I said, a little bit of a shorter show. Um, if you're catching this on YouTube, catch it on Spotify, make sure you drop it a follow. Tune in to the Twitch channel. We've got some Shift Summer League concluding these next two weeks. SSL Week 3 begins Tuesday, July. Is it July? July 30th and the 31st. So That's right. For us right now, of course, that's tomorrow and the next day. Uh, but if you're catching this on VOD, I gave you the dates as well. You need to be tuned in. Like I said, it's the final week of league play. It is exciting. We're having our, our, our we're determining who's making playoffs and who's getting the money and who is uh, being eliminated. One more time, I want to say a big thank you to all the, the shift staff and everyone that had a helping hand in setting all this up. It's been so You're much fun so to welcome. watch. I hope, uh, hope all of you watching at home have been enjoying it. Uh, I know I certainly have. Yes, yeah, that does it for uh, the uh, that does it for the twenty sixth episode. It does, it does. It, it's uh, I actually I, I don't have anything to do for the shift for the shift summer league broadcast. I'm the broadcast lead, but usually that just involves fixing issues when they come up, and when there's no <laughs> issues, nothing comes up. So I'm just nice. sitting there, hanging out with the admins. It's cool. They're a cool bunch. Uh, it's actually already the thirtieth for the Europeans. Oh, so, okay. Uh, so it'll be so it's already today. Match day. Match day. Match day. I always see those tweets. That's funny. It's actually incredible how we've been going on for an hour and twenty minutes now. Mm -hmm. And usually when we're with the three of us, when Michael's here, it is three times forty minutes, and now it's two times forty minutes. We just we got it locked in. Yapping exactly as much as if if we would do this show solo, it would be forty minutes all the time. Exactly. <laughs> we got it down to a science. All right, that's it. Shiftcast, episode 26 in the books. Half a, half of a year. I'm so excited for that. Halfway there, we'll see if we can get all the way with, uh, with no big issues. And I'm already uh, excited for next week because then we have the playoffs coming up. So we have a mm -hmm. lot to talk about for the Shift Summer League. It'll be super exciting. You don't want to miss it. Y'all stay tuned in. Follow the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow the, the Twitch channel as well. Thank you for watching. As always, catch you next time. Bye-bye.